Oh, how do? Nice out, isn't it? Particularly today. Wow. Now, I'm going to start today's programme being a bit of a schoolmaster. I'm going to ask you a question. We're going to be dealing with metal, metal forging, metal making on this programme. So, what I want you to do is think very carefully which town in South Yorkshire comes to your mind when it comes to forging metal and making metal. You have two seconds to answer because it's fairly obvious, isn't it? Hands up those who set Sheffield. You're wrong. You're wrong, I'm afraid, because where it started is where we are today. This is Wortley Top Forge and this is Wortley. So, why then isn't Wortley the rolling metropolis that you see Sheffield is? Well, there's several good reasons. Because it ought to be, didn't it? If metalwork started here, that's where the folk should have come. But it didn't happen that way. Why? I'll tell you in a minute. First of all, you need a big supply of water. Sheffield has got the river sheaf. And, well, to be honest, Workley has got the River Don. So, I think that's a score draw, don't you? No, the problem is actually not water, it's transport. You see, Sheffield, well, just look here. Look at the state of the railway. It's big, it's massive, it can carry a lot of freight. Workley, on the other hand, well, it does have a railway. Um, but um, um, And then, of course, before the railways, there was the canal. Here's Sheffield Basin, big, beautiful, and could take a lot of freight. But when it comes to Wortley, all they had was pack horses. So it's pretty obvious what happened. Wortley declined, Sheffield took over. But hey, there's still a lot of what used to go on here to see. Why don't you come with me? Let's have a look around, eh? I think we'll start the investigation in the largest building of the forge. It's very old, not as old as me and Gordon who's going to tell us about it, but Gordon, it is, if not the first, one of the first in South Yorkshire, isn't it, this? It, the main thing is it's the only heavy iron forge, water-powered, now in existence. All the others in the country that did exist have been closed, scrapped, bulldozed, you name it. So we're now unique. How lucky was this place then to get seen in time before it was totally obliterated? There must be a story to that. A little bit of luck. The place closed in about 1910. The reason being that the mild steel that was produced in Sheffield undercut them for price. This place was about working with red hot wrought iron which is practically pure iron. After they closed, well, one thing that happened, they got the scrap man in. So imagine somebody with a horse and cart and a sledgehammer uh, smashing Just anything that they could up. sell for scrap. What a shame, but then times were different, weren't they, I suppose? And then you come to the 1940s and you've got the Second World War. So again, there is luck, because where in Sheffield, quite a few people lost their front railings, which were wrought iron. You can see the remains where they've been cut off with uh, oxyacetylene. Little stubs, yes. Yes. Well, it didn't happen here. Or perhaps they were leaving it until a little bit later, and then it wasn't necessary. Mm -hmm. uh, one reason why the site didn't get developed was there's only a tiny little cottage up on the, ro on the road, whereas at Low Forge along the road, uh, there are two very, very nice houses, which meant they wanted to get rid of the old works, bulldoze it out, and have just the residences there. Yeah. We bought the place in 1953, and it was a wreck. The scrap man had been in, yes. All the tools had gone, all the floor plates had gone. 
Uh, the engine over there, the air pump, had been scrapped and all gone. So from the 1950s, all we've had is the next 60 years trying to put stuff back. <laughs> and you're doing a pretty good job of it, but when did they actually start doing metal work here? Uh, oh, really, way back. Uh, in these buildings, sometime before 1640. At the start of the Civil War, the Wortley family, of course, supporting King Charles I. He lost. Backed the wrong horse there, didn't they? They backed the wrong horse. Yeah. By the end of the Civil War, the family had been fined, their lands had been confiscated, and Sir Francis Wortley is in the Tower of London. At that time, the Spencer family had come over from Shropshire and were beginning to take over the iron industry in South Yorkshire. So the Spencer family leased Top Forge and Low Forge and eventually about 25 other forges in South Yorkshire. Cornered the market. Once you've got the market cornered, you put the price up. Yeah. The second thing you do is you try to be more efficient. And what they did was separate the parts of the industry out so that somebody digs up iron ore, somebody else runs a blast furnace to make pig iron, somebody else, like Low Forge, purifies the pig iron to make wrought iron. And here, we simply bashed red hot wrought iron to any shape that anyone wished to buy. But it's big bits of wrought iron, mind you. We're talking about 100 kilograms. We're not just talking about one or two kilograms. So big hammers for big bits of wrought iron. Actually, when it's red hot, it's like plasticine. It, malleable. It's a good word, that. You can squash it and hammer it to any shape you like, but even more interesting, you can hammer weld it. You can get two bits hot, put them together, hammer them, and they become one, one bit. bit. Mm. So it's possible to make almost anything you like out of wrought iron. Yeah, so it must have been going a long time, but eventually it came to an end, didn't it? Well, they did have one last time when they could make a profit. And it was when the railway industry was developing from about 1840 onwards and they decided they could make axles for railway wagons out of wrought iron. So more or less all the time Queen Victoria was sitting on the throne, the people here were bashing red hot wrought iron into long thin axles for railway wagons. And it was all a going concern at that point. And then Mr Bessemer undercut them by making mild steel cheaply. Ah yes. And that was the death knell. It was but we've tried to restore the place to look more or less like it looked at the time when they closed. Mm -hmm. We've looked at one or two old photographs and tried to put back stuff to match with the old photographs. It's we have replaced these floor plates. We have put in new furnace cases, new old furnace cases, and we have rebuilt the air pumps in the corner there. So, a lovely, lovely museum. You obviously want people to come round, and in a way, that's what we're here for. What about, somebody said, hey, this looks like a great place for me to do some volunteering. Are you looking for people? We have volunteers. Uh, usually they tend to come in after they've retired. It's about the only time they've got any spare time. <laughs> uh, they surprise you, because the skills they bring aren't the skills you'd expect. Uh, sometimes you find someone who's worked in an office but in fact is very good at doing plumbing uh, Not yet, yeah. somebody's been a teacher but they try their hand at bricklaying it's lots of different skills and if you do a job slowly and carefully enough you don't have to spoil it even though it's not supposed to be your skill. <laughs> so there you are, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. If you'd like to come and work here, you can. But if you don't feel like it, just come and have a look around. This place, as you've already seen, but you're going to see some more now, is absolutely wonderful.
The woodworking machine shop will remind you lads of a, shall we say, certain age, what used to happen in woodwork and metalwork classes at school. That's, of course, if you want to remember school. Yes, I remember using all those tools there, smoothing planes, crosscut saw, brace and bit. They're all here for you to experience again. Look at the size of this wood turning lathe. And if machinery like this needed fettling because it didn't work properly, here's where you came to get your tools to fettle it. Just look at all these machines, including this bandsaw. They're built to run from a belt and pulley system driven from a central engine. Inevitably in the old days it was a steam engine of which, well, there's more to come later in the programme. We were here out of season. In full season, most of this gear will be operating, so you can experience the sound of it as well as the sight. The sheer size of some of the exhibits can actually take your breath right away. Now, the amount of bits and pieces here would keep a blacksmith busy for months, I would think. Oh, and as well, there's a bit more of the belt and pulley system to look at. To get an idea of the site, they've made a rather wonderful scale model of it, as it used to be in the past when it was at the height of axle production. If you look at it carefully, you will see that it is very, very different to how it is today. For instance, here, massive pair of shear legs, because some of the weights of the forgings that they did weighed tons and tons and tons of it. Also, you will see there are many houses associated with it, although surprisingly enough, only one that was an actual dwelling. The rest were used as offices and messes for the people who worked here. So, if you just have a look around that, I tell you what, at this time I'm feeling a bit thirsty. Do you think we should go and have a drink? Well, just have a quick look and we'll be back and let's go and get a cup of tea. Eh? Cheers. <laughs> You know, after you've been here for half an hour or so, or possibly an hour if you're good, you get to start thinking, I'm a bit parched. Can you get something? Well, here we are, look. You can. There's tea, coffee, biscuits, you name it. And if it's fine, there's a lovely place to sit outside, as you'll see. We'll be looking after you, or one of the people is David. And David, it's great to see How old are you, by the way? Fifteen. Now... We've been talking to old fellas, haven't we, most of this time, and I give you due, but look, here at Top Workley Forge, younger people are volunteering. How long have you been working here, David? Since February 20, well, this year. Really, this so. year, eh? Right. What, what, got, what got you interested? What, what decided, well, I'd like to come and join these lads? Uh, I'm doing my Duke of Edinburgh Bronze Award at school. Yeah. And, well, my granddad used to come here when he was about my age, and he told me about it, so I've started coming down since. And there's, it's not only you, is there? There's, there's other young lads. Yeah. And girls as well, I suppose. So would you recommend it? Say, if you, well, I'm looking for something to do. It might be an idea to learn things. Would you recommend it? Yeah, definitely. There you are. You've heard it from somebody of your age, youngsters. Come up here. They'll look, there's a warm welcome for you. They'll find your job. And you never know, you just might like it. Cheers. There are inevitable consequences of drinking too much tea. You know the saying, in at one end, well, we'll go no further down that road, other than to say, if you want it to keep in character, you can, because right next door, here is a genuine night soil Victorian privy. Doesn't look too attractive, does it? And if I said to those who don't understand it, sort of book it and chuck it, would you know what I mean? 
Well, don't worry, we're only kidding. This is part of the show. There are proper, pristine toilets right next to the cafe. Stanley, this is wonderful. This is a forge, isn't it? Yes. What, are you, what are you doing here? How do you make it work and what do you do? Well, it works off a hair blower. Yeah. What blows a blast into to the coal. Yeah. And as you can see... Wow, that is off. white hot. That actually burnt that. Yeah. That, that's why that piece... The piece has just come off. Fell off. It's got to be too warm. And this is, this is actually solid metal, isn't it? Yeah. So off in you, you're now going to forge it here, are yeah. you? Right, okay. Well, I'm just going to step back a bit because I know you'll need to step forward when it's ready. And we'll watch this happening. I suppose it's a case of skill and knowing just when it's at the right temperature, is it? Oh, yeah. All different types of steel all have to be worked at different temperatures and you're most able to recognise the temperature. So that'll take a bit of learning, I should imagine. Just practice. <laughs> But you've done it. You've done it as well before here, haven't you? You've done it on a bigger site than this once. Oh yeah. Well, well, tell us about it. Abbeydale Hamlet. You, you worked at Abbeydale Hamlet yes. at one time. All the craftsmen's fairs and <laughs> demonstration days. Yeah. Lovely. Well, it's nice of you to do a demonstration for us. You're okay now, then. Yes, when you're ready, I'm and ready. I will stand back. Thank you. Yeah. No yeah. It cools off quick, but I bet it's still flaming hot, isn't it? Yes. You have to know the temperature, the working temperatures. It's just constant practice. Absolutely. But you've, you've got a bit of an edge on that now, haven't you? Yeah, I just forged the tape it out onto it. Yeah. That's all, yeah. Well, that's forging by hand, but some metal work needs something a bit heavier than a hand hammer. Well, Stan's got that as well. Well, that's great, and it's great to see it working yeah. as well, and a fire like that. Notice the old gilets had to come off for being here. It's a bit too warm for me, yeah? Right, we'll move on. Hope that you enjoyed that. That's just one bit that's working. There'll be lots more when you come. This is our next port of call, and this actually works. You'll see it in a couple of minutes' time, but not before I've talked to John, who knows all about it. This is Elizabeth, isn't it? This is Elizabeth, built by Schofield and Taylor of Huddersfield, and was installed in a mill at Merrydale, near Slawit at Huddersfield. It's a fairly unusual engine, because it was built to fit into the space where a water wheel originally was. So, you can see, we've not got much space long way very cramped but we've built your height. height yeah so it, it was built specially for uh, for that purpose it's a grasshopper engine we can see the horizontal beam working as a grasshopper action and unusually the connecting rod and crankshaft is above the beam normal grasshopper action it's below the beam compound engine so we have high pressure cylinder that side moving to steam from that exhaust into the low pressure cylinder from there on it exhausts into the, uh, the condenser which is in the basement you can just see the rod uh, yeah. so we have a condenser and an air pump uh, in in the basement so in fact it doesn't go chuff chuff does it it's very quiet you don't hear there's no ex exhaust to the to the air the steam is condensed uh, and the hot water collected uh, to preheat the water back into the boiler. So I suppose it's reasonably economical. And but then again, 
all steam engines worked like that anyway. <laughs> I'll tell you what, she looks really loved. You must, you must think the world of her. Uh, we try to. We, we try. <laughs> Uh, thanks ever yeah. so much for telling us about it so if you uh want to work here or you just want to come and look it'll be running have a look at it it doesn't make a loud noise i mean obviously some of the pumps that uh, work with it do but not this so there you have it this is elizabeth would you like to see her working well you can in the meantime i'd best be about it somewhere else you stay and just watch this poetry in motion It's a full day out here and for the youngsters of all ages there's an extensive miniature railway to ride on but we'll have more of that on another programme. If you've got a lot of time on your hands of course you could visit Wortley Hall and Gardens at the same time. Absolutely well worth seeing and while you're in that area Call in at the village as well. It's a wonderfully peaceful place. It's got a marvellous church that's worth looking round. And there's a very decent pub serving decent ale and food that's got ample parking. While we've been here, we've only just scratched the surface of what there is. We've just given you a taster, that's all. You can spend all day and even longer here and still not go around anything twice. Now, if you're interested in coming, rather than me spend another half an hour giving you instructions how to get there, go on to the website that is just underneath where I am at the moment here and it will give you a map of how to get here. It's not difficult and you will be much rewarded. So, that's it for this time. Another time, we'll be somewhere else. Now, you can sit back and wait for that, but for me, I'm gonna to have to start getting there now. I'll see you.